Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. There's a lot, as usual, that we have to cover. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. It says the Bitcoin rally is showing no signs of slowing down as the world's most popular digital asset has hit a new high again today. During Friday morning's Asian trading session, Bitcoin reached its highest price since January 2018 as it topped 16,490 US dollars, according to TradingView.com. The massive move has built upon November's momentum, adding a further 5% to the king of crypto over the past 24 hours. This week alone, Bitcoin has risen by 7%, and since the beginning of the month, less than a fortnight ago, it has cranked 20% outright nearly every other traditional asset class. Bitcoin appears to be eating into the altcoin markets again, as its dominance has spiked to a six-month high of 66%. Just yesterday, if you were looking at the cryptocurrency market at all in any time during literally the last 40 hours, uh, Bitcoin's price continued to rise and many of the other altcoins were slinking down. But it was one of those, Bitcoin was up by around 3, 4, 5%. The altcoins were down by anywhere from 3 to 15% and all their Satoshi prices were also in red as well. Well, uh, analysts are now eyeing the previous all-time high of 20,000 as the next target. Should the momentum keep building, Bitcoin is now only 21% away from this lofty peak, which was seen nearly three years ago. Uh, this is now the new number that we're aiming for. I mean, we, it's not like we weren't aiming for it before, but this is now the number that a lot of people think that we are going to hit. Uh, Bitcoin is, what is it? I think it's at 16,350 the last time I checked, like right before this video was made. We hit 16,500. There was a slight dip. And then the market has started to pump once again. Altcoins are also going up. They're like a tiny bit up. They're like 1, 2, 3% across the board. But Bitcoin is clearly the one that everyone is kind of paying attention to. The 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 entire idea of the, uh, the altcoin situation, if you will, is that this time in bitcoin's past when bitcoin was this high in price altcoins were already surging and altcoins are no longer surging so not even trying to sugarcoat it but the the nicest way of saying it is that altcoin should be a lot higher and they're not as high as they should be or they were the last time that bitcoin was at 16,500 which is leading many people to believe that a lot of the altcoins are not going to rise at all or if they do, it won't be as significant as people are expecting, or simply that it could also be the other side of that equation that uh, mainly people are paying so much attention to Bitcoin because they're trying to get it to pass by 20,000 so that we can hit a brand new all-time high number and then, you know, the market kind of goes insane. But all eyes at the moment are on Bitcoin, mainly because it's Bitcoin, but also because the price continues to rise while the altcoins aren't really performing as well as people expected them to perform when Bitcoin is rising. Uh, the other news is um, PayPal has now opened up its services to, I believe it says everyone in the U.S. except for Hawaii, doubling the maximum dollar amount that could be spent on crypto assets. They said we are pleased to announce that all eligible PayPal account holders in the United States can now buy, hold, and sell cryptocurrency directly with PayPal, the company said yesterday. Bitcoin surpassed 16,400 before correcting lower. We're already back where we were before. The news is that PayPal has now activated their cryptocurrency buying service. I expect by the end of this month, we should have some proper numbers as to the amount of people who are using it. But I do expect a lot of people are going to be using this service. It's a very easy way. Nearly everyone I know uses PayPal in some shape, form, or fashion, has it on their phone, has it in some sort of way. I know my friend in, in Florida right now is rolling his eyes because we had the discussion before that he doesn't have PayPal. And I was like, everyone in the world has PayPal. It's one of the easiest ways to... Anyway, the point is, um, yes, I expect this to take off. I expect many people to use this service, especially if Bitcoin continues rising in price and people are looking for a very easy way to enter the market. While joining Coinbase or Kraken or Binance may not be that difficult. You know, you simply type in your numbers, numbers, numbers. If you already have a PayPal account, you see Bitcoin's rising in price, you just run to your computer, you run to your phone, click buy Bitcoin, and then you have Bitcoin. Um, what else is there? It says impending CME gap close could propel Bitcoin's price to 18000 don't even care about the CME thing. Uh, it's, so many analysts are trying to figure out 
why Bitcoin is no longer paying attention to the uh, starting of or ending of futures contracts with the CME. Once again, it's because it's the CME. Like the 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 Chicago Mercantile Exchange is not going to dictate the price of a worldwide currency. It's just not going to, especially when they're not even trading in Bitcoin. They're trading in U.S. dollars. So if anyone gets panicked by any movements in the CME, well, that's your own fault for selling your Bitcoin because you probably shouldn't have done that. This one says Bitcoin dominance at five month high as altcoins take a beating. Once again, because Bitcoin was draining all of the altcoins, some of them are moving up. Like Bitcoin has like a little, we'll see eventually. Bitcoin has this little spike in price and the altcoins were also trying to follow the exact same trajectory uh but still bitcoin's the name of the game yada yada this says why why bitcoin could rally to twenty four thousand before seeing its first major retrace i without a shadow of a doubt think that this is very possible to happen i think i, I think twenty thousand dollars isn't even a it's not even a question anymore we're, we're we're clearly working our way there we're not even in a hyper crazy insane bull market yet we are just in a normal bitcoin rising as bitcoin used to do years ago why am i swinging a pen around uh kind of market thing we are going to hit twenty thousand. the question is if we're going to hit it this month or if we're going to hit it next month a lot of my friends have been debating between this uh florida friend thinks that is <laughs> florida friend he thinks that it's going to happen this month we have is it 17 days left of this month it seems possible i think if we hit twenty thousand by the end of this month we're going to have a retrace back to seventeen thousand sixteen thousand because you know people get afraid for nothing but if we hit twenty thousand by the end of this year that means 2021 is just going to be absolutely insane price wise and things are going to continue rising but i think this is exactly where the market is aiming like even right now like even earlier when i when i first looked at the prices after we retraced back from the uh, the sixteen thousand five hundred. We were at sixteen thousand one hundred and twenty. We're not. We're now at sixteen thousand three fifty. So clearly, this is the movement that the market is trying to go. I think twenty four thousand is completely doable. Completely. I think we're going to hit twenty four thousand or somewhere around it. And what's going to end up happening is the price will retrace. Everyone's going to freak out. It's going to be on the news that Bitcoin crashed once again, and the Bitcoin's going to start rising around January, February, and that's when we really get into the news and everyone starts going completely insane. Yada yada yada. Plan B: one hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin. It says Bitcoin rallies, altcoins could follow soon, and this one says. Technical analysis, Ethereum close above 470 US dollars could spark larger rally to $500. Logical. Sure. Why not? If, if, if the price of the coin has to be above a certain thing to make you believe that it can hit where it previously did before a couple of years ago, sure. Why not? We're at the point right now where Ethereum is so actually utilized, but also incredibly hyped. I think that we are aiming for a $1,000 Ethereum price within the next three to four months, roughly around that time frame. If Ethereum 2.0 takes off without a hitch, if we have the Genesis contract and the Genesis beacon and all this other stuff end up launching properly on time, and we start getting news that tons and tons of different cryptocurrency exchanges are also allowing people to stake and people start staking and start seeing really good returns, then that you know that's 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 really all it's going to take. Uh, what was it? The, the eight to fifteen percent back on your ether. That's that's absolutely completely insane. And of course, people are going to try and jump to that as quickly as possible. This one says charted. Litecoin prints bullish breakout. Why Litecoin could surpass sixty five U.S. dollars? Sure, why not? I think Litecoin's previous all time high what was it three eighty, four hundred or something like that. Sure. All, uh, a lot of the major altcoins are going to definitely perform very well. I have no real hope for a lot of the other th number 25 and lower coins. I don't think they'll perform as great as people think. Uh, don't forget, everyone's just been accumulating Bitcoin over the last year. All the last six months that we've been getting has been institutional support for Bitcoin. While they may be lying, while they may be saying something behind the scenes, maybe they're not just accumulating Bitcoin, and maybe they're also gathering up XRP and Lumens and Badoomins and all these other coins. You know, just safely assume that they're definitely gathering Bitcoin, and that's kind of where everything is going. Because I do not believe, once again, and we're going to see these numbers so soon, and it's going to shock a lot of people. I don't think that there's more than actually a, a, a million Bitcoin actually circulating around like actually up for grabs you know stuff that's on a cryptocurrency exchange don't forget that people actually use cryptocurrency exchanges as another wallet so if someone has 50 of something they may have 10 on binance 10 on coinbase 10 on so and so and a lot of people think that because they're on an exchange that they're far more liquid and people are far more likely to actually to actually spend these coins that's also a mistake 
people are holding these coins because they may trust the cryptocurrency exchange a lot more than they trust themselves. And they may trust their computer that they're currently using. Maybe their computer is really old. Maybe they don't trust themselves with the ledger. Anyway, the point is, um, yes, bullish across the board. I saw no negative news except for something saying uh, it, it, it was roughly around the, the, the 24,000 uh, kind of news. It was like. If Bitcoin nears 20,000, we may see a retrace back to 16,000. Sure, why not? Um, but everything is looking good, and I am excited for the future of the prices. Let's move on. Mm, next up, and of course, this was going to happen. Crypto exchange Binance has launched an Ethereum mining pool. Seven months after launching a Bitcoin mining pool. The expansion means Binance Pool users can now also mine Ether. In addition to Bitcoin, Binance will charge a 0.5% pool fee for Ether mining, half of what its competitors are charging. Ethermine and Spark Pool, for instance, levy a 1% fee for Ethereum mining rewards. For the first month, however, doesn't really matter. Um, Binance has a an Ethereum mining pool. No one should be shocked by this. E uh, Binance is doing everything. Like, not half of everything. They're doing everything, everything. So, um, of course, they were going to have this. There's no mention. It says it around here as well. There's no mention if they're going to uh, or when they're going to announce their support for Ethereum 2.0 staking, which they are most certainly going to do. Can you imagine Binance doing everything and then not announcing that they're going to support the second largest coin staking? Of course, they're going to do it. Um, maybe this is also why Ethereum's price has been rising. I, I, I doubt it. Uh, news like this are like a new mining pool, especially something from Binance, regardless of how large Binance might actually be. I don't think that would have any actual influence on the price. I'm pretty sure it has to do with the amount of Ether that's being staked in the Genesis contract and also the... Yeah, wow. Talking way too fast. And also probably the amount of people who are uh, buying up more Ether, trying to get to 32 Ether before something astronomically insane happens. Especially, it, it usually, price predictions really rile people up. Remember we were talking about yesterday, the people talking about that Ethereum's price, once we have 2.0, is going to be anywhere between four to $8,000 per Ether. No one knows. Just a, a, a prediction. But then the other thing that we also got yesterday talking about that Ethereum's price could go up to $30,000, that's a little insane. So I think a lot of people are definitely gearing up for the future potential price value of Ethereum and where it could go. And yeah. Let's move on. <laughs> Bitcoin investments have been growing so growing so greenish since the past months as leading cryptocurrency began a bullish rally. Yada, yada, yada. On Thursday, the cryptocurrency Bitcoin broke 15,000. That was way before. So, uh, setting another yearly high over at 16,000 amid the growth. The famous author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Robert Kiyosaki, believes now is a good time to buy Bitcoin. Following the decline of the U.S. dollar, every single rich person in the news is constantly talking about Bitcoin. Robert Kiyosaki has been on the train for a while. I think in the very beginning, he actually hated Bitcoin like they all do. This is, this is, this is why I, I, I always say they always all claim that they hate Bitcoin. It's terrible. It's useless. No one's using it. What's the point? Yada, yada. And then they all end up getting into it. So he once again declared, now's the time to buy some Bitcoin, for those of you not looking at the screen, this one says central banks, gold, and the decline of the U.S. dollar. Why has the U.S. dollar lost so much of its purchasing power? Oh, actually, that's from 1995. Anyway, I was looking for articles uh, about the decline of the U.S. dollar uh, over the last couple of days, and I found quite a bit of them. I clicked on this one because it said it was from 2020. Lo and behold, it's from 1995. Um, I wonder where this is all going to go. I have a friend in New York who I discuss the... First of all, he's like really into it. Um, he's obsessed with the fall of the US dollar. And I... I don't disagree with him, but I don't think it's going to happen as, as quickly as he believes. He thinks it's going to happen like within the next couple of months. And I think it'll take about a good 10 years for us to see like an actual decline or a stop usage of the US dollar. Unless we get proper news that there are tons of countries around the world who are going to be using... Bitcoin and stuff like that. I don't know. All right. Anyway, um, Kiyosaki says buy more Bitcoin because, you know, every rich person is buying Bitcoin right now. Let's move on. Um, in unsurprising news, sorry if I seem like I'm going a little fast. I have a couple things that I have to do today and I'm on like a very strict time limit. 
So just want to make sure that I cover everything that I can. It says the Russian Ministry of Finance has developed new amendments to the country's cryptocurrency regulations. The proposal outlines a new set of rules for crypto owners, exchangers, and miners, as well as penalties for undeclared crypto transactions. Russia's Ministry of Finance has proposed new amendments to the country's law on digital financial assets that will go into effect in January. This was reported by Russian News RBC. Cryptocurrency owners, both individuals and organizations, will be required to report their crypto transactions. Wow. Will be required to report their crypto transactions and wallet balances to the tax authority if the total transaction exceeds 7,757 US dollars. What a really weird number. Even the fact that it's 600,000 rubles. Wouldn't it be like a million rubles? 600,000 rubles is, is a very weird exact number. In the calendar year, the proposal details. This is a significant increase from the ministry's proposal in September. There we go. See this? See it right there. This is uh, the ministry's original proposal in September that required taxpayers with a total transaction of 100,000. Yeah, that makes it. That seems to make a not. I mean, following following where people are sending their money doesn't really make much sense, but it makes a bit more sense than them. Uh, the first reporting deadline will be on the 30th of April, 2022. Uh, I saw something else. It was about Russia and another country talking about the banning of cryptocurrencies within those countries. I don't think they're going to ban them. They just really want to kind of contain them and make sure that they know exactly where all the transactions are going. Uh, and it's not just Russia. It's every single country, not even major countries. It's every single country is doing the exact same thing. They are all terrified in some sort of way of losing their currency's power. Uh, but they also see the I, I'm sure they see the benefits of where these coins are going to go and the amount of money that they'll be able to make in revenue from people who are mining people who are holding them, people who are selling them off. They'll also get a portion of that as well. But um, the 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 penalties sometimes are a bit insane. Even in, I mean, I was going to say even in general, having to tell someone what you do with your money, it's the same exact thing. If you transfer money in the States or in Europe, you always have to declare like where it's going, how much, you know, why are you sending this money? And all these other things. It's a bit weird. I, I try to think... It's not optimistically. But I try to imagine what a world would be like with decentralized cryptocurrencies and have private transactions that are in like mainstream use. Uh, what then happens to all these rules and penalties and other things like that if no one knows where the coins are coming from or even where they're going? I don't know. I, I, I think a very weird thing sometimes when it comes to cryptocurrencies. If you if you can only see inside my brain, it's it's a very weird mix of nonsense and not conspiracy theories, but you know, I'm I'm halfway there. Um also this was very popular news. I, I get why it's popular, but it's it's not that amazing for it to be everywhere. It says crypto payment service provider BitPay has launched BitPay Send. A new blockchain-powered mass payment platform for businesses, BitPay Send allows organizations who do not want to handle or own crypto themselves to process crypto payments in mass. It can be used to complete payroll payments, pay contractors or affiliates, or process customer cashback and rewards programs. Available in 225 countries. I, I, I thought there were only 193 countries. Available in 225 countries. Somebody Google that. I, I, I'm i pretty sure I read 193. I, I, I don't remember there being over 200 and definitely not over 220 countries. All right. Uh, recipients do need to pass KYC and have a crypto wallet. BitPay claims the platform cuts processing times from days to minutes. A lot of this seems very weird. First of all, this is the this is the most popular news of the day. Uh, it does not take days of processing time to send cryptocurrencies and sometimes it doesn't even take minutes so that's also a little weird the service has been adopted by advertising platform adgate media in order to pay affiliates around the world adgate president dan saposnikov explained that many of their affiliates are located outside of the north america and europe where access to bank accounts can be difficult so they want to be paid in bitcoin but he said that the firm did not want to buy and hold all the other <laughs> they're going to love that in the future uh, the firm does not want to buy and hold crypto, so that's going to be very fun for them and their wallet sometime in the future. Um, yeah, the news basically being that they now have a crypto payment service through their website, so you can send crypto through here, through the BitPay send kind of thing. Um, one, 
It doesn't make any sense because you can do that yourself. You download a cryptocurrency wallet on your computer, on your phone, and you 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 send the cryptocurrency that way. Um, pay just one percent of the transaction amount. Okay, that might not be too bad. Because that, yeah, because I thought it said like 1% of the, no, 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 no. It says pay 1% of the transaction amount. So if you're sending a million dollars, you have to pay 1% of that million that you're sending. I thought it was saying the transaction amount as like the transaction fee amount. So if they're behind the scenes paying, you know, $8 for a transaction fee on Bitcoin, you have to pay 1% of that. But like, that's not too bad. Um, yeah, really popular news all over the place. Type it in like BitPay Send. You'll find tons of articles about it. Um, not that amazing. It's just another company who's allowing for this, but it, it doesn't even defeat the purpose of cryptocurrencies. Like we know how to do this without having to use a website. Like imagine you can download a wallet right now on your phone or on your computer for free and send money around the world as you so wish without having to go through BitPay. But imagine then having to go through BitPay. Like you have to sign up for BitPay. You have to give your personal information. You have to do the KYC and the AML. You have to send your, you have to buy cryptocurrency from somewhere else, send it to BitPay, send that money from BitPay to somewhere. It, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. It's kind of the same exact way that all these um cryptocurrency uh like debit cards were coming out. No one's spending their crypto right now. Like imagine if you had a couple of months ago spent your Bitcoin on a 1999 Mazda Miata. Is that a car? And you spend an entire Bitcoin on it, you you lost out on four thousand extra dollars that you would have made. No one's trying to sell their crypto. Anyway, the point is, yeah, that's that's the BitPay news. I, I I get confused by a lot of these news stories. This was the most popular news story of the day, even more even more so than the PayPal one. Maybe the PayPal one will roll out as the day continues going on. But nope, it was BitPay. Let's move on. In news. Speaking at the annual European Central Bank Forum on central banks, heads of three central banks said that they are actively exploring the idea of a central bank digital currency. Some predict it will even be the end of stablecoins like Tether. The chairman of the U.S. Federal Reserve, Jerome Powell, said that it was more important to get it right as opposed to being first. Nevertheless, he said, we have been actively participating with Andrew and Christine, and other central banks at the BIS to look at the benefits of a central bank digital currency. The leaders of all three central banks recognize a rise in digital payments in the last decade and also because of 19. Um, I have believed for a long time that the stable coins that we have now would be in trouble. I assume a lot of them have already crumbled or we simply just don't hear about them anymore or whatever the actual case might be but this is probably exactly why the people from tether i think tether is on like eight different blockchains right now and i assumed that they did this mainly because of situations like this they probably caught wind behind the scenes that someone didn't like them and was going to try and shut down their entire operation so this is why they've been uh, making sure to spread themselves out should a blockchain or a system end up dismantled or banned or whatever the case might be. I think stable coins in our market are going to continue regardless of um, regulations or not. Even if things like Tether and USD coin and all these other things do end up getting shut down, I think they will still exist in some capacity. I think they're still going to be used. But I think this is also what makes regulators a little upset, especially with the with the amount of Tether that's being created. If what the people from Tether say is true, every time the new Tether is created, it's because the Tether treasury is getting that much of an equivalent in some type of an asset or in a fiat currency. So when you see that Tether is rising by billions all the time, this also uh, slightly displaces. Like I, I, I wonder in, a, in, in an actual world ranking of, of world currencies, how high Tether is compared to other currencies. Like imagine if, if, if there are 225 countries... If Tether's like number 20 in a ranking, it's 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 fascinating to think about that these things that have been created a couple years ago, people are choosing to use them more than the actual currencies that we've had for a very long time, whether it be because of convenience or speed or who knows exactly what it is. But um, sure, I expect that a lot of um, stable coins, especially those who have offices, are going to be completely shut down within the next year. Or so once we get the final or, or started the rollout of the central bank digital currencies. But um, I don't think they're going to disappear. I think there will be a need for them behind the scenes on many cryptocurrency exchanges, especially if we ever 
get to that world where we're all using uh, decentralized crypto exchanges, which still, uh, that was another thing that was promised back in 2014, that by 2018, we'd all be using only decentralized exchanges. Lo and behold, we know exactly how that goes. Um, and of course, this one also as well. It says the president of the European Central Bank, Christine Lagarde, has said that the bank should reach a decision on releasing a digital euro early next year. In an online policy panel held on the 12th of November, Lagarde stated that the European Central Bank, or the ECB, was not racing to be the first in its efforts to release a central bank digital currency. That's a lie. However, she said that the result of the consultation of the central bank launched in October on a digital euro would be ready in January 2021. She said, at that point in time, we will make the decision as to whether or not we go forward with a digital euro. My hunch, but this is a decision that will be taken collectively, is that we might well go in that direction. If the European Central Bank or any other bank decides not to make a central bank digital currency, I'd be floored. Of course, this is where they're going. It has This, is, this has already been decided. This, this, this was probably decided last summer like actually like a couple of months ago that they were going to definitely roll out with all these things. Think of all the other countries who we've heard who are participating in efforts and or studies and or trying to create their own central bank digital currency. These things are already created. It's just them trying to figure out how to get them out there. One of the usual first proposals is to let banks use them to settle major transactions and to also let corporations in on the fun as well, um, a la China, where apparently the news has been uh, allegedly, that it would be Alibaba, um, WeChat, and some other entity that would um, have the, the Chinese digital currency first. Uh, and then the other part is going to be how to figure out how to get your public to use it. Because in situations like this, you can't force people to do things, but you can slowly coerce them into that direction by saying, oh, this is bad, use this, you'll get a discount, this will be better for you, this is more easy, so so and so and so, and then before you know it, everyone's using a digital uh, central bank currency, and all their transactions are being tracked, and we don't know a world that's any different. So, um, of course, this is going to happen. Um, I'm sure the decision has already been made, it's more about the rollout. I assume by 2024, 2025, especially if Bitcoin passes by 50,000 US dollars, 100,000 US dollars, we're going to see a massive rollout of central bank digital currencies immediately. If Bitcoin is already the sixth largest currency in the world at $16,000, imagine it hit 50,000 50, US dollars and then 100,000, so saith plan B. Um... Anyway, of course these things are going to be it's 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 absolute uh absolute absolute nonsense. Um and here's the actual thing on their website. It says ECB forum on central banking 2020, central banks in a shifting world. What have you so on and so forth. I don't have my phone. Hold on. This is in the room with me. Like sometimes I I I just don't know where my phone is and I'm like, "Okay. Um as always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters." Professor Wally from Gunbite University, Snacky Chan, Tolek Banan, Auspicious Agile and Blockchain, Navarro Williams, David James, Attila the Han, Yasha Harari, Oscar Maldonado, Utopia 569, Moonman High, XRP, Joshua Vineyard, Martin Storio, Nostromo, John Sarth, Indiana Marita, Ebilbiophobia, Todd Mullis, Adam Grayson, Moha Maroney, Mass Avengers in Thailand, Jair Snyder, Wise Knight, Owl 242 to the World, Bankroll Network, Crypto Artist, Cold D3D, Damien Setsuna, Richie Richard III, Vlad the Impaler, Paxis, Nick Mangela, Vodian, Anthony Charge, I'm Gone, Jimmy Fox, Minting Coins, Millie, Chester, Minting Cows, Give Leg Day, Yes to Crypto, Wadim, Give Boatface, Indy Stephanie, Smart Swan, Staff, Arfmanic 17, Bake Me a Cake, Tigra, Macho Nisa, All Crypto, with Lana, Krillo, Michelle, URL, and Bolero, Bastos. Thank you all very, very much for your support. Thank you to everyone who is a member of the channel. Thank you to everyone who is a Patreon patron? Patreon friend. I'll call you Patreon friends. And to everyone who is a supporter of the channel in their own way. At the moment, Bitcoin is currently at 16,298 US dollars. Here is right here, 16,500. We dipped once and then went back up. And here's the other thing that I was telling you about before I started the video where a lot of all the altcoins were down and I saw them, saw them surging up a little bit right here in price. I guess that did not hold. For some reason, Litecoin's going up. I'm not really sure why Litecoin's going up, but Litecoin's going up. Uh, no real Litecoin news, as it were, uh, that I could find or that I heard of. Maybe something behind the scenes with Mimblewimble is taking place or activating because we did hear that quarter four was going to be the time frame for Mimblewimble. And I think they might have changed that to quarter one of 2021. 
Um, mm, 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 mm. Anything else crazy? Nope. Nothing too insane or out there. They all follow that kind of same thing of going up and then kind of slamming back down. Dash is up. Who knows why? Ave's up. Who cares? Uniswap is up. Um, Yearn Phi is also up. Waves is up by 6.7%. Sure. Um, as always. Nope. I said that already. Uh, thank you all for... Hello for watching. Merry, Merry Christmas. Wait. How does it go? Hope you all enjoyed. Hope you all are having... I have so much to do today. Hope you all enjoyed. Hope you all are having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope that it is absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching and or listening, and I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.